What's up guys? Happy Sunday everyone. Today, pretty hot topic, something that has been on my heart for the last two, three weeks. It's Sunday, you get to see me uncut. I say it how it is. My videographers don't get to cut me to edit, to add a B-roll. This is just pure sharing of information. I'm gonna share a couple behind the scenes information from last couple of videos, Eric Reno and a few others. We're gonna talk about Graham Desert owner of Roofing 101 company that just filed bankruptcy recently. I actually visited Rodney, uh, Rodney. I visited Grand Desert a couple months ago and I knew what's coming. Uh, I already knew that he closed few locations. We actually interviewed him and you'll see that interview be before he files bankruptcy. But this video is going to be all about borrowing money. I'm going to share with you my darkest times the times where I almost filed bankruptcy myself and why I hate that so much because there's a lot of misinformation out there uh, this debate that I have with Mr. Lee hate probably will never go away uh, Ponzi scheme how I call it so many of you disagree with me and that's fine this is how I call it like Robin Peter to pay Paul for me it's a form of Ponzi scheme I understand it's not clear definition and for you, if you're proud of Robin Peter to PayPal, if you call it investing in your business and leverage that, up to you. But this is my channel and I share different stories. I share my vision on everything and you don't have to agree with me. But one thing I want to start with is so often I see comments um, that uh, you know so misleading comments themselves misleading a lot of times my purpose is not to argue with you my purpose is not to say this is the right way or highway my purpose is to share with you uh, information and to draw the picture that there is the other way it's not the only way I'll give you an example a couple weeks ago I did a video on uh, asking a question do you really need 50% down payment it was just a question nowhere in a video I said that you have that I recommend don't take 50% nowhere in the video I said that you don't have to take down payments the purpose of that video was to challenge you to show you that there are successful very successful companies in business who don't take deposits take smaller percentage uh, deposits and they're doing just fine so if you think that taking deposits is the only way that taking 50 percent deposits is the only way you are wrong there are other people who are doing it better you you don't have to listen but you have to just admit that other people are doing it differently and the same goes to that um how it's all started this conversation started is when we were discussing with Lee Haidt, he said something that I don't agree. And I see so many comments under my interview on his channel and under uh, his interview on my channel. Where people say, well, Dimitri, you just don't understand. This is how contractors and uh, like builders in America work. Everybody borrows money. Listen, maybe I don't understand. Maybe I come from a different background. And here's why. Here's my background. I've worked for a lot of businesses before. I worked for immigrant ba um, established businesses. I know a lot of immigrants who came to this country with nothing, zero. They never borrowed money. They have they paid off in 10, 20 years their houses. They don't have a debt. They have very successful businesses. And when I look at those stories, I admire them. Now, I also work for companies, for American builders, for American contractors who close their doors. As a matter of fact, I work for a cabinet shop that was um, started and grew by Russian immigrants. I think they were from Moldova. Small country, one of the poorest countries in Soviet Union. So they came to this country in the 90s. They built a business, they owe their real estate. You're talking about three, four, five hundred thousand dollar homes. You know, father, kids, everybody, you know, live an American dream. Uh, they didn't have that. They have uh, real estate. They've been buying equipment. You're talking about hundred, two hundred thousand dollars equipment. I worked for that business and they were super successful. And I, you know, admire them. Um, after that job, I went to work for American contractor. After two years, that contractor filed bankruptcy. He could not pay me. He could not pay other employees. He could not finish his jobs. And our average projects were $150,000. So when people say, 
you know, like all contractors in America, all builders, you know, Robin Peter to pay Paul and they're all, you know, committing Ponzi scheme. Like in a sense, they do. If you have to rely on Paul's money to pay Peter, I'm sorry, you're running Ponzi scheme in a sense. I mean, it's not what dictionary book will tell you, but in this business, it's just playing with the fire. It's very dangerous. And I, the purpose of this video to show you guys that there is a better way. If you go back on our channel, you know, this week we showed you this morning, actually, we dropped the interview with Eric Rina. Eric Rina started with nothing in 2013. He has $5 million in real estate. He doesn't take down payments. He is very profitable. He worked his ass off. So it can be done. Um, two years ago, we did interview with Mike Brown. Same thing. $1.6 million gutter company. You know, he sold his company. He is a millionaire. He At the time that he sold his company, he has like six um, rental houses. And after he sold the business, he just increased the amount of properties he owned. So we, be careful who you listen to. And I, we also have right here in Minneapolis, companies who've been doing $350 million, Thor Construction went out of business. Maybe they were the typical American contractor who wanted to leverage their debt where they are today, nowhere to be found. Uh, Graham Desert, his story is very unique. I know Graham, uh, we've been friends for five years. We've interviewed him three times. Uh, here's what I have to say about that situation and Lee hate situation, for example. Lee asked me during the interview, Dimitri, why you don't like big companies? I love big companies. You know, I have many big companies in my network, but there are good bad companies, there are disciplined bad companies, and there are bad companies who just have big sales numbers. There are companies who just talk about how big they are. Like, I'll give you an example Anthony Delmedico. He's proud of uh, stating that he's done $179 million in business. Does it make him big? Does it make him smart? Does it make him. No, I don't know about Delmedico's business how profitable he was, how much profit he actually made, how many millionaires have he made. You know, there's other things that matters more in business than just your uh, sales, that your locations. When uh, Lee Haidt asked me in his interview, and you can see, go back and rewatch it. And this is not a drama. This is just open, honest conversation. He asked me, do I run a good business? I have nine locations. I don't know. Graham Desert, when I interviewed him, he wanted to be in 48 or 49 states. He said it, and he was already in 12 states licensed. He was spreading himself too thin. And I actually talked to him and to others, like, don't you think you're spreading yourself too thin? Because his sales were not that big. I would rather be $10 million um, player in one market, uh, in one city, than in many. So when you don't know your numbers, when you're spreading too thin, when your overhead is too big, your sales, they're not going to help you. But here's my story. And this is uh, what, what why I want to share. Like, I've never shared it before. When I started my roofing business in 2013, I started with a $2,000 to my name. And I spent my first $2,000 to wrap my vehicle. That was my story. That was my beginning. After that, I had nothing. I moved to my wife's parents' basement with four kids. And for three months, I studied to, get, to become GC, general contractor here in Minneapolis. I got my license and I did about $900,000 first year in sales. I did, I paid myself about 60,000 and I reinvested back in the business about 70, 80. By the end of the first year, I have my vehicles paid for, like we have Nissan NV was paid, my Jetta was paid off. Um, we have truck and three trailers. First two years in business, I didn't have one credit card. It was actually to this day the best time in business because I knew my cash. I was growing slowly but surely. I was increasing my sales. I was pocketing more money in my pocket. You know, after two years, I have employees. I have payroll. Um, I have paid off vehicles. I have three dump trailers. You know, we look like bigger company. We were a bigger company. We have a couple of hundred reviews online. Not a single account even with a supplier. And I remember how I opened my first supplier account. I did not uh, buy at the time from ABC. And I remember driving my Volkswagen Jetta, fully wrapped at Storm Group. Local ABC rap was driving behind me. He called me. He's like, 
uh, is this Dimitri? I'm like, yes, I just saw you in a highway driving behind you and I looked up at our records and you're, how come you're not buying from ABC Supply? And um, he asked to buy me lunch, we met and he said, well, how much you buying this year? And I told him, you know, I was already buying like half a million, six hundred thousand dollars worth of material per year. He said, what if we open your credit line? And what if uh, you buy from us and he give me prices and stuff? Up until that point, and this is end of year two, I didn't have a credit line. I didn't have nothing. Well, seems just normal, right? You know, you have 2% back. You... So I started doing it. You know, every month I would pay off like 30000 50 60 At the end of the year, I got in trouble because it's another beast to manage. And season ended. We couldn't collect all the jobs on time just was in a hole spent all my cash on something else maybe bought some trailers not on myself but on the business expenses and i remember first time i got in trouble i'm like what did i do so now i have to pay eighty thousand dollars it's just stuck up fast and i i had to go and collect it and i remember amount of stress i have to go through i made it happen you know i paid off abc nothing bad happened i never filed um bankruptcy but uh i started borrowing money it was the beginning beginning of the end for me two years later when we were way bigger storm came um you know we, we were managing several of those cars like people were stealing from me and i got in the hole i remember at one point we had three hundred sixty thousand dollars in debt it was overwhelming and um i remember my accountant says like you might want to f file bankruptcy meet with your lawyer about it i'm like I, i'm not file i'm not that guy i will never gonna be that guy i'm not filing bankruptcy and for me bankruptcy is a really bad word um uh, you know what uh this week graham desert came and he, he shared that he think filing bankruptcy on 3.8 million he said in his life video um you know I admire guys like that. I admire guys who can move forward and admit their wrongs. And to me, Graham is one of the best guys in the industry. But like all of us, you will make mistakes. And I hate that. Like, I hate it with passion. Um, you know, my every, like, there's a lot of purchases in business and personal that it makes sense. You know, you don't have to lecture me how it makes sense to buy cars. I know the tax law. I know the write-offs. Like, all of it, yes. But I also see and study businesses. And those businesses who don't rely on that, who don't have buy into this popular message, leverage that, people who stay humble, pay themselves less than they can or should or whatever, live beyond their means those people are usually more successful and this is just facts and those are the people i admire they are humble they have a huge savings they have a very good sense of business and people who love to borrow that they usually show off they usually will tell you how much money they make it's all about like this big numbers and the amount of locations and the amount of cars they have and the amount of employees and all of that and my answer to it it's not over until it's over you know sometimes you can like i was reading story of um thor construction 350 million dollar company that lost it all that bubble sooner or later will burst and it can happen at 50 million it can happen at 100 million or 500 million dixie home improvements back in the day they were 500 million dollar company nowhere to be found today so you are never too big to fail and if you love that that you are playing with the fire okay uh, there are a lot of good companies in this business who have that and they truly leverage it but it takes financial discipline it takes a lot of knowledge and not many people can do it and i would say average joe in this business will lose his business if he start boring too soon pay himself too fast like that is not your friend it's a tool but you have to know how to use that tool again i follow different people different mentality uh you know i'm not a dave ramsey guy to the core i definitely have my credit cards and i definitely have my loans and 
you know, but my average car is paid off within a year and a half. I borrow money to buy cars because it's a smart thing to do, to have. You know, you go in, like the car I'm sitting right now is a $50,000 car, and I'm probably going to pay it off in one or two years. Just if I have extra cash, if I want to buy something else, I'll go, like most of my, I have really fancy Mercedes-Benz in the past, and I would get a sixty seventy thousand dollar loan and then within two years so just you know what i don't want a payment and car drives different when it's paid off it's just a fact so if you can leave you know paying for things as you go if you can build a business without borrowing money it'll be better business that's my advice to you today and when i hear people say no all the big builders and this is the industry standard. It's not industry standard. I can show you so many examples. I'm so glad we did Eric Rina interview. It was just perfect timing because you can look at guys like Eric Rina and say like, okay, I want to be that guy. Or you can be you know, like Roofing 101 Graham Desert. He's a great guy. He tried and he's not a bad guy. He did not do nothing wrong. And but he still filed bankruptcy and it's painful and it's hurtful and he probably done mistakes and we should learn from those people and those mistakes uh, because because of people like Graham we know the problem is real the risk is high and it could happen to anyone if guys like Graham Desert can file a bankruptcy and he is good like he's disciplined he's solid dude but if guys like Graham couldn't manage money, couldn't manage that, couldn't manage, like, I mean, it's probably more than that, and there's more lessons from that story, and can't wait to share with you what happened to Roofing 101, but just be careful who you're learning from, be careful uh, with those credit cards, be careful with those loans, because it's a dangerous, dangerous path, you'll be way better off by not borrowing money, and again, I've done business completely debt-free, and I've done business leveraging money and leveraging someone else's money, it always comes with a price. I got burned a few times. I never filed bankruptcy. I always got out of it. Another story in our channel is um, Mike uh, Fizzle from Roofmax. If you watch that interview, he shares history. Him and his brother got uh, almost filed bankruptcy. They were talking about it. They, uh, they owed like over 1.2 million and they pretty much put everybody in one room, all their creditors, and they came up with a plan, and within a year and a half, they got out of it. But it's hard. So it happens to the best of us. But talk to smart people, way smarter than you are, and next time you want to give someone advice, always look at other spectrum. Just because your mentor says, borrow money, go take it, Two, three hundred thousand. I mean, look at what happened at PPP loan. You know how many people went to jail because of PPP loans? You know, because they misused it. Or listen, throwing money at the problem does not fix everything. You know, increasing sales, sales don't fix everything. It's financial discipline. Comment below what you think. If you love that, if you hate that, I want to hear from you. And again, for me, Robin Peter to pay Paul is the worst idea in business i don't call it smart don't call it leverage it's you're not leveraging anything you're hostage to your debtor like you're a slave actually as the bible says so so i don't want to be slave i want to be free and every time you borrow money you become slave to someone and that just never ends well thank you guys for your attention enjoy the rest of your sunday comment below what you think